Good morning and welcome to St. Patrick's Cathedral for the celebration of the Eucharist on the 33rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. The Mass text begins on page 221 in the Celebrating the Eucharist Missalette. All the music can be found in the printed program or in the Blue St. Michael hymnals in the pews. Our celebrant is His Eminence Timothy Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of New York. Please stand and join in singing the entrance hymn which is found in the program, Be Still My Soul. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody, to Sunday Mass here at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Uh, we welcome, as well, those who unite with us in worship at home on radio and television, Bishop Thomas Williams, the Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Liverpool, is with us. Thank you. You're very welcome here, Bishop Williams. And Monsignor Richie, I understand there's a group uh, here that are that gather for to remember uh, the people within their families among their friends who have died uh, once a year and they come I'm glad they're here what a beautiful month to do that the month of November 
when we remember the poor souls and the souls of the faithful departed. So, that we might offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass the more worthily, we call to mind our sins and ask for the mercy of Jesus. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the sun of justice with its healing rays, the word of the Lord.
the Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. The Lord comes to rule the earth with justice. Sing praise to the Lord with the heart, with the heart and the A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day, we worked so as not to burden any of you, not that we do not have the right. Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord. Be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, all that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrection, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Jesus, tell me. Laos TV Christe. Well, everybody, welcome again to Sunday Mass here at America's Parish Church, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Um, <clears throat> One of my good Jewish friends here in uh, New York is Rabbi, Rabbi Joseph Potasnik. And as you won't be surprised, we often speak about religion, faith, uh, theology, the Bible. And uh, one day he said something uh, very insightful to me. Listen, because it caught me off guard. He said, you know, um, we Jews and you Christians we're both waiting, we're both waiting for the Messiah, the Savior, to come. And I must have looked perplexed, and he said, yes. He said, the only difference is we're waiting for the Messiah, the Savior, to come for the first time. You're, you Christians, are waiting for the Messiah, the Savior, to come a second time. <laughs> He's right. Rabbi Potasnik seems to have a rather good grasp of our 
belief in the second coming of Jesus Christ at the end of time as judge of the living and the dead. That's what Jesus is talking about in this morning's gospel, right? So let me ask you, do you believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ? In five weeks, we're going to celebrate his first coming when he came in history at Bethlehem, that first Christmas. So we will ask, when, when is he going to come for that second time? Well, the answer is, of course, we don't know. That he will come, we know. When, when he will come, we do not know. In just a couple of minutes, when I'm finished with my sermon, we are going to recite the Nicene Creed, and we are going to be saying, as our Christian family has been saying for centuries, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And in that beautiful prayer after the Our Father, we will conclude by saying, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, there it is, our belief in the second coming of Jesus Christ at the end of time. So. Here's the point, everybody. We know he is going to come again, but we don't know when. Even Jesus, God's only son, had to confess, my heavenly father is the only one who knows, and he hasn't even told me. Well, I don't know. Why do you think uh, we shouldn't question God's wisdom? But I guess we can't help but ask, I wonder, why, I, I wonder why God hasn't revealed to us when he's going to come again at the end of time and this world as we know it will come to an end and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. I, I wonder why he hasn't told us. I don't know. Probably a good number of reasons. For one, we know he usually doesn't work that way. He likes mystery. He knows a sense of mystery can be good for us. If you think about it, he didn't let the people of the Old Testament know when the Messiah was going to come the first time, did he? His son sort of snuck in at midnight at that first Christmas. So he doesn't like to reveal everything to us. He, he enjoys a sense of mystery. Here's another reason. God knows us pretty well. As a matter of fact, God knows us better than anybody else. He made us after all, okay? And he knows, <laughs> he knows that if we knew when he was going to come exactly, well, we would loaf and not be ready. We kind of take advantage of things until we know it was time to get ready and get prepared. So to me, I don't take my doctor's instructions about losing weight till about a week before I got to go back and see him all right so God knows that's the way we are so he figures I'm not going to tell him because they're just going to loaf and I want him to be ready and that precisely everybody is the real reason if we listen to Jesus his son in the gospel why he doesn't let us know when he's going to come back because he wants us always to be prepared he wants us ever to be ready. He wants us to live always with the view of eternity, always knowing the fleeting, passing nature of the creation around us, which could end any time. By the way, if you think about it, not only, not only do we not know when, He's going to come at the end of time, that cosmic second return of Jesus. We don't know when he's going to come for us personally at the moment of our own death, do we? So he hasn't revealed that to us either because he always wants us to be ready, to be prepared. There's a beautiful saying that makes a lot of sense. 
Live today as if it's the first day of the rest of your life. Not bad. But equally true, live today as if it could be the last day of your life, and not only our personal lives, but the whole world as we knew it. Could this be another reason he doesn't tell us when? Because it's sort of his way to let us know that there's certain things beyond our control. Boy, we love to figure out everything. We love to be in charge, okay? And there's certain things that we know we're not in charge of. My grandma used to say, the weather. The weather is God's way of letting us know we're not in charge. Okay, boy, we can kind of predict and read signs of the times and listen to the weather. But even the best meteorologists would tell us, we don't know for sure. We can kind of anticipate and predict, but when all is said and done, <laughs> the weather has a mind of its own. God's in control. I th in it, I've added something else to the weather since I've been here 10 and a half years. New York traffic, there's nothing we can do about it, okay? You're stuck in it. You're stuck in it, it's out of control. So. There might be another reason why God our Father hasn't let us know exactly when he's going to come again. Another reason, am I making my case here? He wants to teach us that history is his story. History is his story. Providence is in charge. History is the unfolding of his plan our own personal history, and the history of creation as we know it. And when it will come to an end, he knows, we don't, but he's in charge. And finally, folks, Jesus and his heavenly Father urge us, because we don't know when he's going to come back, urges us to patience Patience, perseverance, and constancy. Those are the words Jesus uses in the gospel today. Patience, perseverance, and constancy. And obviously, as we have to admit, that we don't know when he's going to come again, either for us personally or for the end of the world, we're taught to be patient for that. Persevering in our preparation for that constant in our fidelity towards him. Very interesting if you think about it, everybody. We, if you keep all this in mind, we live in between times. The great British poet, Bishop Williams Auden said, uh, for the time being, he thought he read a great deal into that word, the time being. We live in the time between when Jesus came that first Christmas and in the time when he will come again which we don't know exactly so we're always kind of a, in a tentative in between time to the, to the best news of all that Jesus did come and to the news that keeps us patient, persevering and constant that he will come or as the theologians like to remind us, we're living for this time being between the already and the not yet. Have you ever heard that term? The already being the Messiah, the Redeemer, the Savior, Jesus did come already, and the not yet, he will come, all right? And about all we can do is be ready, prepared, constant, trusting and persevering. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven 
and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis. For our shepherd, Timothy Cardinal Dolan. For all bishops, priests, and those who guide us in the faith, that they may be holy and effective in their mission to draw all people to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will watch over our beloved city of New York and protect us from terrorism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have experienced sexual violence, abuse, or harassment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for innocent victims of terrorism and for persecuted Christians in the Middle East and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, of all, for leaders of all nations, that they may work together to see that peace and justice reign throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work in disaster relief, that they may always realize that the, the good that they do in bringing aid and hope to people in their greatest need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For innocent Mormons who died in Mexico, and for William Finneman, and all our beloved dead, that they may enjoy the fullness of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask the intercession of Mary, our mother, and of St. Patrick, our patron, as we make these and all of our prayers through Christ our Lord.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for your and glory in his name, for our good and the good of all his creatures. Grant, O Lord, we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you've made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <clears throat> of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As Jesus himself taught us in, in the ancient language of the church, Ademus dicere. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, Thomas. Glad you're here. Thank God. Peace for much more. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in singing the communion hymn, which is found in the program. Draw near and take the body of the Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> we have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O oh Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing the recessional hymn, which is found in the program, O God, our help in ages past. <laughs>